Katya Ivanovich grew up in a small village to the far north of Russia, where the heavy winter's snow cut them off from the rest of the country for four or five months at a time. It was a tiny village, the kind of place where no one bothered to lock the doors to their houses, and the children could run and play wherever they pleased, in the forests or in bad weather, they could come to the kitchens of each other's houses to drink bowls of hot soup. But there was one place. They were told they must never go. The lake on the other side of the hill. It was a place of evil omen. For several times over the years, the bodies of young women had been found drowned there, floating face up in the reeds, and it was said by some that there were evil spirits who lived in the lake, who lured the girls closer and then drowned them in the cold black water. Foolish superstition, Katya's father would say after one too many vodkas, but even he warned her to stay away. Well, it was bright one autumn night that Katya was lying in bed and she couldn't sleep because the full moon was shining in her window upon her face. No matter how many times she sat up to pull the curtain across. But then, as she sat up one more time, she heard the strangest sound from outside. And opening the window, she got a, a breath of cold autumn air into her face, but there it was. She could hear birds singing in the middle of the night from a direction of the lake. Without quite knowing why, she found herself swinging her legs out of bed, putting on her heavy fur coat, her boots, her hat, her scarf, her gloves, and sneaking down the steps of the house. Knowing that if her parents woke up and caught her, she risked a sound thrashing. But she stepped out of her house into the village and found herself alone there for the very first time in her life. She hurried along the path, going up the hill through the forest towards the lake, and stripes of moonlight shone upon her as she went and the sound of all the birds and all the insects singing together in one grand orchestra became quite overwhelming as she neared the top, looked down upon the lake, and <gasps> fell to her belly. Drinking in the sight with open eyes, as she saw that there, across the sparkling surface of the moonlit lake, were dancers, each one of them as tall as a tree, and their bodies made up of shimmering pieces of moonlight. They glided and pranced and leapt across the surface of the lake without causing so much as a ripple, and Katya just lay there, totally absorbed in this nocturnal ballet. And she watched for as long as she felt was safe to, when she saw Venus rising above the horizon. And she realised she'd been there for most of the night. She jumped up and hurried down the hill, through the village, into her house, up the stairs, and buried herself beneath her blankets, trembling with excitement. Well, later that morning, her mother came to wake her, to tell her that snow had fallen, and school would be closed until they could clear the paths once more. That would normally have been good news. But all Katya could think was that now that winter had arrived, it would be many months before the paths were clear enough for her to climb the hill again and see the moonlight dances. It was a hard winter, with winds blowing in from Siberia and the temperature dropping to minus 40. And in school, Katya's teachers noticed that she seemed distracted and absent. She would answer their questions, but 
her mind was clearly somewhere else. And indeed a struggle was going on inside Katya. On one hand, she wanted to tell everybody what had happened, even if that did mean she, she was thought to be crazy by everyone there. But on the other, she felt like keeping the secret to herself. There was something delicious in knowing something that nobody else did. And when spring came and the snow finally began to melt, it was with a beating heart that Katya lay in bed impatiently waiting for her parents to start snoring in the other room. And when finally they were fast asleep, she got dressed with a fur coat and hat and scarf and boots and gloves and crept down the stairs, out into the village and up the hill. But there were only a few birds singing that night. And when she came to the top of the hill and looked down upon the lake, her heart sank inside her, as the moonlight dancers were nowhere to be seen. But there they were, there they were, look, look, there, in the far corner of the lake. But they were tiny, distant, twinkling figures now. She wondered if she might have the courage to go home and get an empty vodka bottle to come back and scoop them up. Katya came back to the lake a few nights later and discovered that now the moonlight dancers were as tall as she was. And so she saw that as the moon grew in the sky, so too the moonlight dancers grew, until once again on the full moon each of them was as tall as a tree. Katya left the house whenever she could, even if that meant she went to school with bags under her eyes but she would lie there the whole night through when the moon was out, drinking in the movements of the dancers, wishing she could somehow join them. Until, on the full noon night in August that summer, disaster struck. As Katya lay there, totally absorbed in the dance, suddenly she couldn't help herself but release a loud And in that moment, the moonlight dancers froze where they were. The birds and insects stopped singing. And then as one, the dancers turned and began to walk towards her, their long, spiky, glittering arms outstretched. And they grabbed her around the shoulder. Katya tried to scream, but no sound came out. And she was lifted high up through the air and down towards the cold, black water of the lake. There was a great splash as she met the surface and she finally screamed, ah! but the sound was drowned as she was pulled down and down into the lake. She struggled for her freedom, but the arms gripped her tightly around the shoulders. And then two things happened. One, she realized she could somehow breathe even though she was underwater. And two, she saw something shining at the bottom of the lake, upon the lake bed. And her fear gave way just a little to curiosity. And as they descended further and further, she saw it was in fact a glittering moonlight palace. With shining pillars and archways. And there in the centre, there sat a moonlight queen upon a throne built entirely of moonlight. Katya was sat down in the centre of the courtyard and the rest of the dancers gathered around her. She saw us dance. She cannot be left to live. She must suffer the fate of the others, the dancers declared. The Moonlight Queen listened and the dancers gathered around Katya, their long spiky arms outstretched towards her neck and in but a moment more they would have squeezed the life out of her. 
But then Katya did something, something that surprised her just as much as the others. Without knowing how or why, she closed her eyes and began to dance. And it was as though, after all of those months of watching the dancers, their ballet had filtered down to every cell in her body, and it now came alive. And she moved as though in a trance, or perhaps it was because she was underwater, but she moved so slowly she lost all sense of time. And when she finally finished and opened her eyes, she saw the rest of the dancers staring at her in astonishment. The Moonlight Queen arose from her throne. She is one of us. She cannot be killed. But we cannot stay. We must find new skies under which to dance. And raising her arms, the queen began to spin on the spot, faster and faster, until she became a dazzling pillar of light. And the other dancers did the same, until the whole scene was so luminous that Katya had to shield her eyes. And when she lowered them again, she found herself lying by the side of the lake. The moon had gone down behind the forest, and the dancers were nowhere to be seen. Her hair and clothes totally soaking wet, she stood up and hurried a long way round through the forest back to the village. She climbed the stairs and into bed, and the fever she caught from her chilly night at the lake left her in bed for three weeks with a burning forehead and wild hallucinations. The doctors warned her parents it was quite likely she would never recover, or if she did, she might suffer some damage to the brain, as she mumbled words about moonlight and lakes and dancing that made no sense to anyone. But Katya made a full recovery, to everyone's surprise. And then she went on to win a scholarship to study ballet in Moscow, of all places, even though she had never taken a lesson in her life. Katya Ivanovich went on to become one of Russia's most famous dancers. The critics said that to watch her, well, she moved with such a lightness and a grace, it was like watching a dancer move across the surface of water. But when she was asked how she had learned to dance up there in the far north of Russia, Katya would only give a shy smile. But there were those who said that, just for a moment, if they leaned close, they swore that they could have seen across the watery surface of her eye a tiny flicker of light. Dancing. <laughs>